I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. It is the 2nd of December, 2023, and it's just after 9 in the evening here in South Africa. Um, I'm back with another video, and this video is a continuation of my previous video that I did, where we had a look at the, the beasts of Daniel chapter 7 and 8. And uh, in that video, we had a look at how these beasts uh, relate uh, to each other and relate to the the statue of gold, silver, bronze and iron in Daniel 2. Uh, and we also went into some detail as to who, who the various nations and empires were in relation to these beasts. And then of course we went into Daniel 8 uh, and had a look at the how the the ram and the goat related to to these uh, beasts of Daniel seven and also to this to the statue. So the the purpose of this video is not to go into the detail of this at all, but to move on from this. So if I would, if you haven't yet see, watched this video, I'd highly recommend you you first watch um, this video to relate to what I'm going to share this evening. And if you have watched it, um, there's uh, there's very few people that actually have have watched it. There's only about 107 people that have uh, that have watched the video. Um, and it was a it's kind of expected. I don't have a large channel, and I'm not about trying to build a channel. Uh, I'm really just trying to share some scriptural studies with like-minded brothers and sisters that want to get into the into the word and and acquire more truths i just want to remind you that you know the acquiring of truths is what the lord expects of us if you have a look at the the parable of the talents that's what it's all about um, the parable of the talents is another one of these greatly misunderstood parables of the lord and it was about a master that gives to his servants uh, talents according to their abilities to the one he gives five and to another he gives two and to another he gives one and on his return the the two uh, good and faithful servants have have taken their the, 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 the talents that they were that they were given and they've acquired more talents the, f the one that received five acquired five more and the one that received two acquired two more and they were both regarded as good and faithful servants. The one that received one talent went and buried his talent and hid it and he did nothing with it and he was considered to be a, a, a wicked and unfaithful servant. Uh, and in addition to that, that servant had no understanding of his master. So when you understand the parable, it's about truths. The talents are truths. To some According to the ability, the Lord has given five truths. To some, according to the ability, He's given them two truths. But to everybody, He's given at least one truth. Unfortunately, some of His servants bury that one truth. And they don't even invest it. They don't even make it, uh, invest it so that the Lord can, uh, benefit, uh, so that the kingdom can benefit from the interest of that, of that, of that truth. So, all of us have the ability to discover truths um, that's the more we get into the word the more truths we discover and it's and it's i believe it's part of our purpose and, and we are required to share these truths uh, with others at least so that others um, can can acquire more truths and the lord can benefit from the interest of sharing it that's 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 what i think is, is that's what i'd like to uh, to believe what the lord meant with regards to investing um, the talents that we so it's, it's about acquiring using truths to acquire more truths and also sharing the truths so if you've watched these videos in you know and you believe that there is value in them and that there are and there are truths uh, being shared then please share it with others so that they too can decide for themselves whether it is a truth to be acquired or not. Um, anyway, just just a word of encouragement. Um, 
to at least um, you know get out there and and share it with other brothers and sisters so that the word can get out okay so what I wanted to do in my next what I mentioned in this video in my sorry in my previous video is that I wanted to get into the um, the storyboard of revelations which talks about um, it gives us information of how the beasts uh, when they arrive and what they do and how th how the, how the story plays out and uh, I, I, I real I soon realized that before I can do this I'm going to have to get into what I believe to be the true structure of of the book of revelations uh, if you want to understand the, the book of Revelations and to understand the end times, I believe we have to at least get an understanding of how the the, the book was structured and how it was put together. Um, the Lord doesn't do anything by chance and He does everything for a reason. And there's a reason um, that certain chapters are placed in certain places and, in th and that certain chapters are in certain orders. In and we need to understand, at least to the best of our ability, why the chapters are in the order in which they're they're placed, because it gives us greater understanding of 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 the end times prophecies, etc. And of of the most important book to understand the structure of, in my view, is the Book of Revelations. And unfortunately, we've spent far little, too little time trying to understand it. Um, it is a difficult book to, to read, it is a difficult book to understand, but when when you start getting into it and you, and you understand the structure of it, and that's what I hope to be able to do tonight. I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible. I will get to the storyboard in my next video and I'll probably do it tomorrow. I just want to put this on the table so that we can understand the structure, what I believe to be the true structure, the true structure of Revelations. Okay, so I'm going to just zoom in a bit. Um, I'll zoom out completely. There's the structure overall. We're going to have a look at it um, in, in greater detail. Um, so I'm going to just... Let me, let me zoom in to... Uh, the structure is, it works from the, from, the from the bottom upwards. Okay. So, the book of Revelations, we've got 22 chapters. Um, the chapters... Uh, the sequence of events do not follow the chapters uh, from 1 to 22. Uh, they almost do. There are certain there are sections within the book that follow uh, sequentially with regards to the number, the chapter numbers. Uh, but clearly, when you when you closely examine uh, the, the the chapters, you will find that the, that that is not the case for all of the chapters. So I'm gonna. Um, what, what I'm going to try and lay out now is from Revelations 1 to 22 what, what I believe to be the true structure and the order of chapters and if we read the, the book of Revelations and we read these chapters in this order or with this understanding I believe that the, <clears throat> the, the book becomes that much clearer Revelations, so starting off with Revelation 1 uh, that, that is the story really depicting Jesus the ancient of days amongst these churches um, the church means an assembly okay so the ancient ancient of days walks among amongst his his churches his assemblies in revelations 2 and 3 we 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 have the 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 letters from jesus uh, to his seven churches uh, or assemblies and the overall message to each of them is to overcome uh, he goes into detail in each of the churches um, as to where they're going right and where they're going wrong and what and and he praises and and and, and scolds according to um, their behavior of course there's a lot more to these letters to the seven churches than just the the uh, the seven churches in john's day when he received the vision it was uh, there's the se these seven churches have played out over the last two thousand years, and these seven churches will play out again um, in the last days. So, 
um, yeah, the purpose, I'm not going to get into the detail of that, but that's that's the structure of the revelation is, <clears throat> is the message from from Jesus to his churches and the overall message is to overcome. The next chapter, chapter 4, is about the setting up of the thrones. Um, and I believe this is about the setting up of the thrones on Mount Zion. We read it as John gets to heaven, but the word heaven there is, is a very gen general, generic term. It's widely used and it doesn't give us, we're not necessarily talking about third heaven. And I know that is where, that's certainly where my mind was placed because of uh, 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 what Paul wrote in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 12 uh, concerning the the, the 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 man that was in Christ and who went to third heaven um, and then of course we got the man a similar man that we, that was uh, the first one was like uh, caught up like rapture to third heaven and the, th and the second one was not necessarily in Christ but was was raptured to paradise and then of course we got the return so in my mind the book of revelations where john begins where he starts his vision we we receives the opening visions in my mind all along has been that well that must be heaven the throne the throne room of god but the it's important to note that we are told that the thrones are set up um they are the, 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 there's a setting up of the thrones and I don't believe that the throne needs to be set up in the throne room. This is something else. And, and I, I believe that this is about Mount Zion. And this is uh, Mount Zion is, is, is a place that is uh, where the Lord moves. Um, I think it's come up in, in the word in a number of places. Uh, it's, it's come up in, I think it doesn't, it's not called Mount Zion. It's called the mountain in his, in, in, when Moses goes up into the mountain, and he goes to the mount, it's in um, uh, in Exodus um, uh, twenty-seven, I think. I think I actually got it over. Exodus twenty-four, Exodus twenty-four nine, uh, where Moses, Aaron, and 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 the and the uh, and the other seventy-two, they they go up into a mountain, and there's something going on here, because. Um, they saw God, the God of Israel, and under his feet was a paved work of sapphire stone. That's not just a normal Mount Sinai. That's something else beyond just going up a mountain um, as we know it um, on earth. They went to the mountain of God. Okay, we read later on that Moses went up into the mount of God. Um, and he went up into the mount and, and a cloud covered the mount. So we've got this, this picture of a mountain... In the clouds and we know that jesus said he will you know when he comes we know that when he comes the first time he's coming in the cloud and then he comes in the clouds and then he comes foot down on mount olives so there's something going on here um later on he, he, he um where moses um get him up into the mount and and he was there for 40 days and 40 nights so this is not just the mountain mount sinai but this is now going beyond yes he probably went up into mount sinai but i believe he was taken physically or spiritually into mount zion um that's that's what i'm seeing here we we have the visions of ezekiel in uh, ezekiel chapter one he sees a vision of the throne and it's like a, a throne that's mobile i believe he saw mount zion um and there were others that saw similar visions Daniel saw a similar vision. So those, I think, are giving us a picture. And I think that's what we actually, uh, I think that's what we're dealing with here in Revelations um, chapter 4, where it's an introduction of, of, the, of, of that setup. Okay, not necessarily the throne. Room. Right, then from Revelations 5, now... We're just going to tackle the the uh, the chapters in in the order in which they appear. And I, we we read from five to six, seven, and eight. Um, we, we we there's an uh, a, a, there's an order and an 
an understandable order of events. Okay, in Revelation five we get um, we get inf, uh, inf, uh, in, in, intro, introduction to the the, the sealed book. Um, we we see there the Lamb of God, um, who was as slain. We're introduced to the ten thousand uh, ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, and there's a singing of a new song uh, by the twenty four elders and the four beasts. So those are the, the concepts that were introduced in, introduced in Revelation 5. Revelation 6 is the actual opening of that seal book, um, seal by seal, uh, from the first seal through to the sixth seal. And there we're introduced into, about, into to the, the white, to the four horses, the white, red, black, and green horses. And we're introduced in seal 5 to the martyrs. Later in seal 6, we are, we 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 are we are told of we, they they see something coming and uh, we believe that that is they actually that's Mount Zion again but this time manifest they actually where typically it's un invisible to us uh, by the sixth seal it becomes manifest and visible so they see that and and that's where again we see there that the throne uh, the thrones are on Mount Zion and they they are visible to to all on earth. And uh, so that's what we're seeing there. Then in, in Revelation 7, we see that there's a ceiling of the 100, 144,000. And this, this 144,000 comprises of the 12,000 12, uh, from each of the tribes of Israel, with the exception of Dan and Ephraim that are not included there. Um, we, see, we're, we see that there's a great, at, at this point in Revelation 7, we have the great multitude that no man could number before the throne, standing in wide robes and palms in the hands. Okay, two parts to the group. In Revelation 8, in, in still a sequential order, we see that the seventh seal is opened, there's a time of rest, and then there's a blowing of the first four trumpets, in which is the first half of trumpets. So, so far, the story is following sequentially. In Revelation 9, we have the opening of the, the fifth and the sixth, uh, sorry, we have the blowing of the fifth and sixth trumpets, which is the second part of trumpets. We have the opening of the bottomless pit and those scorpion type locusts uh, released. And then we also see the four angels that are loosed with the 200,000 horsemen. Um, so those are the events. And then in 10, we see there's a mighty angel that comes down and stands one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth. Uh, he has a small book which is opened. Uh, the seven thunders are uttered. Uh, we don't know what the seven thunders are yet, but they are uttered at that point in time. And and the mighty angel says there shall be time no more. So those are the sequence of events that we have, and it's pretty clear and easy to follow um, uh, up until that point. Now, what I want to do is go and have a look at some of the chapters, other uh, the other chapters. And see how they relate to what we've read in chapters 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Well, let's start off with uh, Revelation 5. There we we see the 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of song, uh, thousands of thousands. We hear of a new song that's singing. Uh, when we read uh, um, in Revelation 14, we see a, a similar type of thing. We, we see the Lamb as we saw the Lamb in Revelation 5. He, this time it's he's on Mount Zion. Uh, we're introduced to the virgins, the, the 144,000 virgins, those without uh, guile, and uh, they stand before the Lamb. They get to sing like a new song. We've got a very similar event there. And, and then um, after that we're told about the eternal gospel that goes out, the three angels. That's the first of the three angels, the eternal gospel going out. Uh, another angel and, uh, proclaims that Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Um, then there's the mark of the beast. Uh, a warning not to receive the mark of the beast and to worship the beast. And then we're told of the beginning of the harvest of the earth, um, the, the two sickles. So there's a lot of similarities in Revelations 14 that tie in very nicely with Revelations 5. Okay. Um, if we go and have a look later on, we see Revelation 18 gives us a, a, a lot of detail on the, um, 
Babylon the Great, and the same term terminology is used. And as fallen has fallen, which relates to this, and uh, I do believe that this is detail of the same Babylon that's that's announced to have fallen here in Revelation 14. So there's there's a there's a parallel between these chapters 5 and 14. If we go up and we look at chapter 6, which is the seals, and we read Revelation 13, we we see that Revelation 13 we're we're introduced um, to the seven to the two beasts, the one that has seven heads and ten horns, um, and then the other one that has two horns, and speaks like a dragon, and basically is seems to be in support uh, of the the seven of, of the first beast. Uh, so we know from other scriptures that the time of the beasts um, is during the time of seals so revelation 13 very much relates to the events of revelations uh, of, of six which is the 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 seals one to six um, and then also in revelation 17 we're, we're given detail uh, it seems to be a standalone um, a chapter where there's detail on the harlot that rides the beast. Um, she's called Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. And then f also in that chapter is more a greater uh, degree of description uh, of not only the harlot but also more information on the beast uh, that's refer that's that we were told about in Revelation 13. So Revelation 7 seems to be. Um, a, 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 an extension or more information concerning the uh, Revelation 13's beasts. When we go to um, Revelation 12, now we, uh, Revelation 12, we see there there's an int we are introduced to a, a woman who is in travail. Now that word "woman" in Greek actually more accurately means wife. Now it is a common term right uh, right throughout the New Testament. It's used as woman, but when you go look at the absolute meaning of it, it's wife. Okay, so this woman in travail, we're introduced to her in the heavens, and and then we're also introduced to the red dragon, which is Satan, and both of these are in heaven. Um, there is a the description of the woman very much relates to the heavenly stars, uh, and and relates to Virgo. Um, there's a, there's a heavy um, the the description brings us to understand that is that it is related to the stars somehow even the red dragon is kind of related to the heavenly stars and the constellations i believe that is also to to give us an understanding of the timing of these events uh, we know that the the constellation virgo rises in the east during the time of around about september october of the year so i, I it is my view that this woman the the fact that it's that the description is so heavily leaned towards uh, the under the constellations is is, uh, is about giving us an understanding of the timing but not only that we we've, we've this would be also i believe the woman um uh, that is that is escaped we've we've this this is this is after the pre-trib escape and I believe there is a connection to that as well. The first thing that happens is that the that the woman um, delivers a son, and uh, and we're told that this well, it, well, it, the wording is child in 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 um, in the King James, uh, but it's the word child is the uh, Greek word G five two zero seven, which specifically means son. Um, this G5 to 7 is also the same word used in Son of God and Son of Man. Uh, so, and we're told that this child will rule the earth with a rod of iron. Uh, immediately after that, we're told that the her child is caught up. That word "caught up" is the word "rapture," um, and the word "child" here is G5043 which means children uh, it's not specifically son and it's more general so these are not the same child the the child that is brought forth 
which is the son is not the same as the child that's caught up uh, to, to uh, that's caught up to the throne of God. Uh, so we need to see it. We need to understand that there are two things happening here, and uh, I haven't. I believe that this is related to the the coming of the Son, i.e., Jesus, at the uh, at the end of. He's not necessarily put down on Mount Olives, but he's coming on Mount Zion, and he's coming as one of the witnesses. So he's. This is the the child that is brought forth and the child that is the children that are raptured the G5043 that would be the great multitude rapture um, at this point in time which is related to the time of the end of seals um, at the, between the sixth seal and the and the seventh seal so we've got the sixth seal in chapter 6 we've got the seventh seal in chapter 8 and we've got the description 144,000 in between that so we've got if this is if this rapture timing is related to the time of the end of seals okay then we then the chapter goes on to say that the woman or the wife was then protected by God for 1260 days that's the period of about three three and a half years so she's protected and nourished in a place prepared uh, we when then told that uh, there's a war in heaven uh, between Archangel Michael and the dragon. Uh, the dragon loses, and the dragon and his and his angels are cast out. This occurs during the first half of trumpets. This hundred one thousand two hundred sixty days is also the first half of trumpets. Okay, uh, and then we're told in Revelation twelve uh, that the woman, the wife, flees on the wings of an eagle. Um, and that's to a, where, where she's protected for another for for the for another three and a half years. So um, when I get into the timeline, I'll go into uh, much more detail of who this this the woman in the protected place, and then the, the woman that flees on the wings of the eagle, and how that fits into the timeline. The point I want to highlight here is that this is largely end of seals and the beginning. And the first half of trumpets time which relates to the revelations 8 uh, which is giving us the first half of trumpets and uh, the end of seals the seventh seal and the first half of trumpets revelation 8 and 12 uh, line up and then of course 7 is also at that time with a great multitude relating to the rapture so th these are these these three chapters relate to one another in about the in the same timing of the events okay um, then when we go to Revelation 9 we saw was about the fifth and sixth trumpets and uh, and the, that's the second half of, of, of trumpets when we go read Revelation 11 we read there about the two witnesses and how they witnessed for 1260 days which was this part of uh, during this time here 1260 days but then they we're also told that there's opening of the bottomless pit and we're told about the beast um, that will then make war uh, with the witnesses and the saints with the bottomless pit having been opened so this is the return uh, of the beast having been slain slayed here at the sixth seal now coming back uh, from the bottomless pit and making war again uh, but this time as the son of perdition so the same beast, but in a, in a, for a different purpose and a different power. Um, and then there's the the, um, the this this chapter eleven goes on to the death uh, and the and, and and resurrection of the two witnesses. And at their resurrection, a thousand uh, are slain, and the seventh trumpet uh, is blasted at in this in this in this chapter eleven. So. This is all clearly, uh, the, we've got the bottomless pit uh, mentioned here, it relates to the opening of the bottomless pit in the fifth trumpet. Um, and uh, we've got this war that goes on here, uh, you know, relating to, to these all these events that are in, in Revelation 9. So there's no doubt that Revelation 11 is related to Revelation 9 in terms of timing events. And then of course we get back to 10 which is common 
Now I want you to have a look at if you see if we start at 14 we go to 13 to 12 to 11 to 10 it's it's they're in reverse following the same storyline as we're given in chapters 5 6 7 8 and 9 and 10 in in a four direction so i believe what the lord wanted us to to understand was that the, the book of revelations is written the story is written twice the first time forwards from from uh, 5 to 10 and the second time in reverse from 14 to 10 and when you read the the book in even just reading the chapters in detail in this order um, you, you, I really want to encourage you to do that because you will see that the whole book will just open up to you um, and understanding and this uh, there are so many areas of confusion that just fall away when you read it in this context um, it just boggles my mind that you know people can't see it I don't know so I've tried to put it in a, gra in a graphical format so that you can see for yourself this the structure of it um, so if we carry on from from Rev Revelation 10 um, we will see that um, obviously from 10 we were uh, um, 11 12 13 and 14 is already um, or already uh, taken care of so 10 will jump to to 15 and 16 and but it follows in the correct sequence of events uh, for, because in Revelation 15 6 and 16 we're, we're, we, we see that the, we, we now introduced to the seven bowls of judgment and where the the victors um, are, are standing on the sea of glass and fire a uh, glass and fire and then there's the preparation of the the armies uh, for the battle of armageddon okay um revelation 17 and 18 where we are really taken care of 18 we, we saw was the detail of the babylon that's fallen 17 is the detail of the woman and the beast so we would jump to 19 but again from 15 and 16 to 19 it's perfectly in order uh, of the understanding of the story there we see the rejoicing in heaven the marriage supper of the lamb and the white horse rider going out and armageddon and the final slaying of those that come against god's people and then in revelation 20 we are told all about the millennial reign of Christ, the defeat of Satan ultimately at the end of that uh, millennial reign, and then the final judgment of the dead. So as detail starts getting less and less and less as we as we move up, uh, Revelation 21, uh, we're introduced to the new heaven and earth, and then the new Jerusalem, the Lamb's uh, wife. So and then Revelation 22 is a wrap up. We're introduced to the river of life, which actually starts flowing at the beginning of the millennium, but I believe will be a continuation for eternity. And then, of course, there's the final confirmations of the valid validity of this book and the truth of the matter that's been described in this book. So that's just to zoom out again. So we've got a clear sort of pyramid type structure where we've got a base uh, and then we've got the the, the two storylines coming to a head um, and in revelation 10 and then continuing to the to to conclusion when we have a look at um the the parallel lines here we will i'll try to label them a little bit so these uh, revelations 1 to 4 is really the introduction chapters uh, Revelations 5 and 14 together uh, and 18 give us the, the story of the beginning of, of tribulation. Um, the chapter Revelation 6, 13 together with the detail of 17 is about the time of seals. Uh, Revelation 8, 7, 8 and 12 is giving us the information about the end of seals going into the first half of trumpets. So it's the completing of the end seals and that change over, that phase over. Um, so that's why I've tried I've tried to depict that in, in the color line. So we're going you know, some, from like a purple through to a red, but this sort of reddish purple, so it's a phase over uh, um, in, into and then of course Revelation nine and eleven is, is now squarely in the second half of trumpets. Um, 
the real heat of things to the final judgment which happens at Revelation um, 10 and 15, 15 and 16 at the judgment that goes on then to the final 1000 years and then the new heaven and earth so that's basically a summary of the parallel uh, or the or the parallel lines through th through the step up if we have a look on the right hand side yeah um, this we've got this yellow as being the beginning but this time this time of seals is lucifer's time uh, we need to understand for those that are not yet aware of it lucifer and satan are not the same person okay um, i'm not going to go into detail on that now uh, but uh, there is information available at ministry revealed on this matter or if you drop me a comment i'll i will send you more information on it but the time of seals is lucifer's time and uh, and by the way the occult are very well aware of this as well um the church has no understanding of it though. Uh, then the next section, the next layer, this is, then we move from Lucifer's time to the uh, conclusion of Lucifer's time at the at the destruction of the beast, the sixth seal. And then we have the start of Satan's time where we introduce the red dragon. And that begins Satan's time until he's cast out into earth and then we've got Satan's time on earth and then the angel mighty angel at the, in revelations 10 we're told that there is time no more so that brings us to the end of that matter uh, millennium is the beginning of eternity uh, not eternity yet but at the end of the millennial reign is it is the is eternity the new the new, the new heaven and earth so it's it's um i think that that really just um, sums up my understanding of the book of revelations and uh, with this understanding I, I'm going to go into um, describing the the storyboard I was going to make the storyboard a separate video but I think I'm actually going to continue and make it a one video and just continue with it while, while we've got the structures fresh in our minds um, Okay, yes, no, I'm definitely, I'm going to uh, press on because I think that these things are so closely related that while, while we've got this understanding of the, the structure of revelations, we need to have a look at this, this um, the sequence of events and the times of the storyboard. Just a quick overview, I'm going to, at the top, if I've got three uh, stripe colors, uh, the blue depicting the events uh, happening in heaven, the green depicting the events happening on earth, and the grey depicting the events happening uh, in the bottomless pit. So, just to give you some understanding, then we've got the numbers uh, 1 through to uh, f 15 or 14. Um, they, those would be the years uh, during the, the time of tribulation, the two sets of seven, seven years for, for trumpets, uh, seven years for seals, and then followed by seven years for trumpets, and then the jubilee in the 15th year. So that's the overall structure of the storyboard. At the bottom here, I've got the the um, the chapters out of from Revelation that are, that relate uh, to the story of the beast and the descriptions that are that are all that are related to specifically to the beast. So these are not all the verses in Revelation, just the ones that relate to the beasts. So that's what we're trying to get an understanding of. We, um, so just a quick recap. We, we said that we saw that with the, we had the four beasts of Daniel 7, which appeared to be um, really a grouping of beasts that all culminate into one beast comprising of, of seven heads and ten horns. And, uh, and, we was, and even though Daniel doesn't specifically s say this, that they, that they all form uh, the, a beast of seven heads and ten horns, he, he, he eludes. To the to the to the thing we we saw there that we if you look at the four beasts you will have there are there is a count of seven heads and ten horns and the revelation description which includes the the feet of the bear the the, the fact that it's like a leopard uh, that it has a mouth of a lion um, and um, there's a, 
uh, uh, so we've got the bear, the leopard, or the lion, uh, and, and the dreadfulness of, of of the beast in its in in its entirety. It's it's really clearly a combination of of all these beasts that were described beforehand. Okay, so um, just a recap on that. So that's where I'm going to go over now to the storyline because it's this beast that really Revelations is referring to in at the in in, in the story. So. Before I do that, I just want to point out there seems to be a bookmark, uh, which is very interesting. In Revelation 14:9, uh, we're told of the third angel. Um, uh, well, we're told of the three angels. We had the one that the, the where the, the eternal gospel goes out. The second one where Babylon has fallen has fallen, and the third angel is the warning not to receive uh, the the mark of the beast. Um, in, uh, in his for uh, you know, or in the hand. So, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark of the beast of the word, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture uh, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So that's the warning. When we when we have a look at the end of the story, we seem to have the other book, uh, the other book end. Uh, of the story there the other end of the, the other book end here is revelation 15 2 and i saw that they that they were the sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of of his name stand on the sea of glass having having the harps of of god actually i put this here by revelations 15 but i i, I think uh, I've put it here by the by the rapture but I actually believe that that is wrong this is later on um, this is actually this is much later you see this is that's I'd actually did this timeline if uh, before I put the, I understood the structure of revelations but I've never done a diagram uh, for the for revelations um but this we saw was after the uh pouring out of the bowls as this is right at the end um i'm gonna put it there um i think that's end or is that uh 15 15 16 yeah that's is actually after that's 10 it actually goes over here right at the end <laughs> okay um yeah so just a little bit of thing because we saw that, uh, just a quick recap we saw that the 15 has yeah, the balls and we uh, mentioned of the sea the victors are mentioned here which is after the the mighty angel which stands on the sea and the end of and this time no more and then we're told of the victors so that's right at the very end so yeah so this whole um yeah so you can see there's still a work in progress and we're still trying to get an understanding all right let's let's um all right so i brought through the that that the seven head uh, the beast of daniel with the seven heads and the ten horns and that's what we're seeing here and uh, you would have met i would you would have remembered that last week i mentioned that it there is evidence that the this beast uh this beast is largely formed and in place before the beginning of uh, of of the opening of the seals, and it's because of what um, uh, because of what Daniel had to say with regards to the daily. You see, this uh, it was we had this this horn this uh, this horn horn that uh, that comes out of the uh, one of the seven that magnifies himself even to the prince of the host and by him the daily is taken away and then we see, and 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 the sanctuary is cast down and we see there that um and he cast down the truth and and then we're told that this from the daily from the taking away of the daily uh how long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot and then we were told it was uh, 2300 days which is six and a half years 
which um, I interpret and understand it to be the time from the beginning of seals to the end of seals when the sanctuary will be cleansed and when Jesus returns on Mount Zion and they begin and they re and he restores the Israelites to to their land so okay so that's why this I think the these events that are described in uh, in revelations uh, sorry in Daniel 8 concerning the ram and the he goat which is uh, Yavan uh, Grisha and the uh, this one uh, horn stroke head mountain this horn means head or mountain uh, which comes to the fore and the ending of the daily these events uh, I believe are happening just before right here in the beginning somewhere yeah and uh, so this this beast comes to the fore and it, and this beast is coming to the fore is the one described in Revelation 13 1 uh, we, it goes on to say and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his, uh, 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 and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the names of blasphemy so we're seeing there's, there's seven heads ten horns and the, the horns have crowns okay so that's what I've tried to depict there and then the, the and the heads have names of blasphemy okay that's the description of which uh, and then it goes on in the next verse 13 2 that the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet uh, were as the feet of a bear and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority so hence the red color because we, it's the red dragon that gives him power and you'll see that all those those characteristics are from daniel's four beasts of 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 uh, daniel 7. so that's the the beast that we we told about in in um that comes on the scene right early in the time of seals we've seen in the structure that 13 is related to the time of the opening of the seals okay Revelation 13:3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this this wounding of one of the heads, um, and then which is healed, and and it's and it and it's clearly uh, it's some form of miracle that happens, and the people see it as uh, as such probably related to the death and resurrection of jesus christ and yet themselves in a knot and see this beast as being some form of deity this happens during the early part of seals and uh, we're not sure exactly when it happens it, it but it's, it seems to be towards the f uh, the first half of the seals that this event happens this is um this is not the destruction of the beast at the end of seals. This is an event much earlier in the time, in the in the in the events and the and the activities of this of this beast. Okay, uh, and and it and it also fits in terms of the the order of the the chapters and revelations in terms of its timing as well. Okay, um, then it goes and now. I just want to stay on this so if we go down in some of the other chapters uh, I'm just trying to think now it might be better I wonder if I should just okay let me stick to the order of the the verses I'm going to come back and we'll talk about Revelation 11 and this woman so let's just stick to the order of events so we see Revelation uh, 15 there's further mention uh, uh, so you see I don't have all the verses here okay but in Revelation um, 13 5 we're told that there was given unto him a mouth to speak great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 40 and two months that's three and a half years so this time of continuation is the second half that's three and a half years it's the second half of seals okay so for, um, so if, um, that's that's when he's given this beast is given power to continue but at this point he's also given a, a mouth and this 
is given a mouth to speak great things and blasphemies. Okay, uh, we're also told in the very next verse, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So, this seems to be the the little horn that Daniel spoke of. Uh, Daniel uh, told us of of the horn that. Um, Let's just go back to Daniel's. Yeah, so in Daniel uh, chapter 7, um, he said uh, there in verse 8, he said, uh, after he described this terrible beast uh, with the ten horns uh, that was exceedingly strong and dreadful and had iron teeth, etc., and then he said he considered the horns, now that's the, the horns on the, on the beast, and there came up among them a little horn before whom there were uh, three of the horns uh, plucked up by the roots and behold in in this uh, horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and the mouth speaking great things so this is a lo little horn that comes up and what i said in my last video that this is clearly the end picture the final version of the beast so the beast goes from this combination version um, ultimately to this version where the three are plucked in this little horn with the mouth and, and that speaks blasphemous things uh, in, in the final version of, of this horn. So that's, so, and I believe that this happens at the time from about mid seals uh, onwards. Um, so, so it's in the second half of seals that this Daniel 7 verse 8 occurs. Um, also in 11, which also is a similar structure of Daniel it goes it seems to go back in time as I said in the last video um, and he he speaks about the thrones that are cast down and the ancient of days that sit and you can see now again how this all relates to uh, revelations one and uh, in particular with the ancient of days that sit and th and and also going into into revelations uh, four and five um, so the ancient of days um, whose garment was wise as snow and hair uh, uh, of, his, of his head like the like pure wool his throne was like the like a fiery flame and his wheels uh, and his wheels burning so again you see these wheels and this fiery flame and this is the picture that uh, that is Ezekiel saw um, uh, as well um, there was another. There was somebody else that also saw this uh, the same vision. I'm just trying to think now. Um, who it was that saw this the throne of God in this in this form, with the with the beasts and the wings and all that type of thing. And the one in Ezekiel clearly comes to mind. Okay, so this is all, and it's this is all the same as uh, Revelations chapter four and five. That's what we're seeing here. Because the fire streams issued came forth from before him, and thousands of thousands ministered at him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and judgment was set, and the books were opened. It's exactly what happens in the first, in the Revelation four and five. So that seems to go back in time a little bit from verse eight to verse nine, and then he goes forward in time again, and I bailed because of the voice of the of the of the great words with the horn spake, and I bailed even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of us, they had their dominion taken away and their lives were prolonged for a time and a season. So you can see, yeah, this is this seems to fit very clearly from the time that the horn speaks um, to the destruction of the body is the second seals. This is the time when he was given power to continue. So that's why um, in this in the in the storyline, I've got it as I've got this beast as as having now finally reached its final form by mid seals. And he now has received his voice. Yeah, he's given him a mouth to speak great things and blasphemies. And he opened his mouth blaspheming against God. That's clearly this, the, the horn that Daniel was describing, that, that where the three horns were plucked up and, he, and this little horn come, came in its, in, a, in its place. So we had ten, three are taken out, one is added, so it's a total of eight. Just moving in that story, so we've covered that mouth and then it was and then we told yeah in Revelation 13 7 and war was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him uh, uh, of all kindreds and tongues and nations this is clearly the 
latter part of the of his uh, of his time of power and the the time uh, relating to the fifth seal which is the martyring and the the persecution of the saints um, so you can see what I've, I've really just shown is how each of these verses where they fit in in the timeline so you've got revelation 13 1 occurring sort of in the beginning followed by 32 followed by three uh, five where he's now given the, the the mouth to speak occurring towards the middle of the seals the blasphemy is happening during and then of course the the um the persecution of the the and the and the power of to, to overcome the saints from the fifth seal going into the sixth seal at the sixth seal is when he is destroyed and he goes into the pit so he this this beast has now come to the end of his time and he, and, and and he's destroyed okay and the rest of the the, the, the other parts of him uh, the dominion is taken away from him and they, they will appear again later for a time and a season all right so that's um, i think now what we must do is we must go into continue with revelation 13 because um, there's a few other bits and you know if we if the other half uh, it's just interesting now uh, you see how how revelations 13 goes back to the beginning again eh? so the first part up to verse 7 uh, goes to the end of seals and then we go back to revelation 13 from 11 we're going back earlier in the time of seals and we're going to give be given a whole lot of information so um so let's go back to revelation 13 11 which is the second part of i'm going to zoom in again not too much sorry about the jumping around okay i just want to make it so that it's legible as best as possible so revelation 13 11 and he goes and he says and i built and i built another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns uh, like a lamb and he spake like a dragon so this is now the other beast um, in revelation 13. he probably comes on the scene very soon after the uh after the first beast probably not immediately with could be immediately with but probably a little bit later okay it goes on to in the next verse and he exercised um uh, the uh, he, he, he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and uh, causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed so by this time so you, you, you the con there's a connection between these events and the the deadly wound is is in the first half of these seals goes on to say that he and he and he does great wonders so that um, he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword again the the, the, the sword now we know exactly how he got wounded he was probably shot um, and um somewhere probably in the head I, I don't know where but he survived and he's healed and now we're going to have an image coming into the scene and the image seems to come in towards the latter half the the beginning of the second half uh, an image of the beast that will be worshipped and probably this is where <clears throat> the number of the beast yeah well that's the next verse so the next verse and, and he had power to give life unto the image that the, and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause and cause that as many as would not worship the image or the beast should be killed so you can see this relates to the power that is given to over, to make war against the saints and to overcome them and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and, and bond to receive a mark on their right hand <clears throat> or on their forehead and that no man might sell buy, might buy, buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so there's uh, several different factors to consider there so that's all towards this t the time of this martyring and the time of the um the fifth seal etc so that's in that that's where that timing fits in for revelation 13 it's all clearly part of seals there's no debate about it in my mind that revelation 13 is all in the time of seals okay 
Right, let's then if we look at Revelation 12, and you'll see now why I had to go through the structure because otherwise it doesn't make sense why I'm going uh, from backwards in, in and, and we're just really going in order of uh, the the structure. I saw that the structure was from 13 to 12 to 11 to 10. Okay, so if we read here in Revelation 12, we can we we let me zoom in again. Okay, we see that, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Let me just uh, change this view quickly and make it. Maybe that makes this a bit easier. And there appeared a, a, a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun and the moon, under her feet and upon her head, a crown of twelve stars. So clearly there's a constellation story here. What's this all about? I believe... It's purely to give us a timing of the events. Okay, yes, it relates to the revelation, uh, the, the the revelation 12 sign that we saw in September of uh, 2017. That just happened to be exactly uh, seven years ago by 2024, and this timing will be another seven years. So we're talking about. 14 years from the original sign however there may well be a repeat of that sign and maybe even more where, where the revelation 12 sign of september 2017 was not visible with the eye um yeah to because the sun is blocking out the constellation um i believe that this is more visible this will be one that's that's more visible so then if we go, uh, we read on, uh, and she being with child, uh, remember this child, uh, 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 let me just think about this, yeah, she being a child, cry, tr cr uh, being with child, let's just go and have a look which child that is, uh, Revelation 12, 10. so this child here is a different child again from the other two, and this child is pregnant, it's clearly, um, This is in the belly, child with child in the in the womb. So that's G ten sixty four. Okay, so that's a different child. I, I didn't actually picked that up. I just I just saw it now. Um, so this child here is the ten sixty four. That's the pregnancy. So she being pregnant, cried to uh, uh, cried uh, travelling in birth and pain to be delivered. And she brought forth a man child. Now this child is the G5207, which is son, as in son of God, and this is the same word, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And that is the arrival of the son of Jesus. Not visibly to everybody yet, maybe particularly on Mount Zion, but we do know that he's one of the witnesses. Um, and that's I'm not going to get into the detail of that. There are, there's, a, there's some great videos on Ministry Revealed um, explaining this in detail. And uh, so, again, drop me a comment if you if you want to know the detail of that, and I can direct you to that. But this is this is the Son of Man. This is Jesus coming. That is being brought forth. Okay, um, and then it goes on to say brought forth. And uh, uh, was the nation, and then still part of Revelation 12, 5, it's continued. And her child, uh, which is now G5043, which means offspring or children, uh, was caught up. That's Hapatso, that's rapture, up to God and his throne. So that's the two events. Now that is the actual rapture happening here at the end of seals end of the sixth seal but um, just before the seventh seal okay um, and then we introduce and then 12 uh, let's go to revelation 12 uh, 12 6 uh, and the woman fled into the wilderness uh, where she hath place prepared of god uh, that that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and sixty days okay so this is where the woman flees now uh, uh, the wife the woman 
flees into the wilderness. That's bringing the woman into or bringing her back into Israel, into the land. The woman has been removed from the land for seven years. The woman is brought back. This is probably more than just, well, it's not just the people that are in Israel right now. Most of them will be dead. Because two thirds of them are killed at the, uh, at the beginning of seals. Right at the very beginning of the tribulation. This is now the true Israelites, the true people of God from around the world that were scattered. This is now including the, 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 those that are of the, ten, of the ten tribes that were scattered throughout the world. They, they will be brought in, in and these are the, and, and probably some Gentiles together with them that are grafted in that weren't included in, in, the, in the rapture um, over here. So they are brought through into the land of Israel where they are supernaturally protected by God and he will feed her there a thousand two hundred three score days. This is the time we will see there that later on the two witnesses, they will witness for exactly the same time period, a thousand two hundred sixty days. Um, so that's what we see in Revelation 12, 6 there and then it goes, uh, uh, and there was war in heaven, uh, 12, 7, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his uh, and his angels and it prevailed not neither was their place found their place found anymore in heaven so this is at the time during this time period during this time this 1,200 1, is about three and a half years so during this time that the woman is, is in Israel uh, and in her place protected where the two witnesses are witnessing uh, during that time there's war in heaven and the dragon is fighting um, and this is the dragon with the seven heads and the ten horns uh, is now fighting Archangel Michael in the heavenly realm okay um, we, this is the dragon that we were introduced to here in Revelation 12 I, I didn't get uh, uh, Revelation 12 3 so but just before just before uh, yeah, between between uh, crying out and travail to give birth, we were and and the actual brought forward. There was um, we were introduced. It was like inserted in between there, but it was a separate event. Uh, they were, we were introduced that there was appeared another wonder in heaven, um, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. This is not the same thing. This is a dragon now, not a beast. Yes, it ha it has similar features seven heads and ten horns now my view is that is all heavenly bound that is um satan and probably seven and, and six other others or that 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 are the head of that particular satanic heavenly organization if you will um this the ten horns are related also in fact this might even be 70 it might even be ten horns on each head it doesn't say that but we know that there's there are 70 uh, shepherds that uh, angelic beings that are in charge of the 70 nations um that have also uh, you know are in apostasy that have that are have, have um, disobeyed god in in what they were supposed to do and probably part of the the angels that 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 have fallen away and are gone with satan so I'm not saying that is the case. I'm just saying there's a that could be a 70 related in this thing, uh, this heavenly, these heavenly beings part of the dragon, um, or maybe it is just seven and ten. Um, but I, I tend to lean towards the 70. Okay. Nevertheless, it's heaven bound, and they are uh, there's a, there's a connection there in terms of the tail that drew a third part of the stars in heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born so there was looking to devour the the child this is this again if i recall correctly is is the child as in children not son uh we can just double i should have actually put it in here we can go and have a look at revelation 12 4. so this is not um this is this is the children okay the the uh, the definition in in this um the definition here in esau is uh, they're not great when i've got another app 
where it's got uh, some better definitions and it's more clear that it's not the sun but regardless this is not the, the sun is, that's part of son of man son of god is uh, 5207 you can go search g5207 and you'll see that it's it's almost every instance it's related to son of god son of man and this one here is uh, is is different so that's the the children so he sought to devour the children so they were seeking to devour the child before she was born okay uh, uh, so that's in revelation uh, that, that's what this dragon um, sought to do um okay so that's the dragon and then where we introduced to the dragon and well, what his purpose was and what he was trying to do and then we've got this war in heaven between archangel michael and 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 satan remember now this is not lucifer anymore you'll recall in the structure we we we, we had the lucifer was was part of the first part the beast of the uh the false light uh the antichrist uh, but now we've got Satan. He's uh, he's the enemy of the Father, the uh, um, uh, the dragon in heaven, um, and the dragon that deceived um, Eve. Uh, not the same person as Lucifer. Okay, so this is the time now. We in, this is where we're entering the time of the dragon, um, and that's why we introduced this dragon at this point in time. Uh, let's just see now we're gonna get uh, Revelation 12 I think it's pretty much covered Re Revelation uh, 12 okay we can go to the, now it's the end of the the, the seals we Revelation 12 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent okay that's the end story of the of the battle he was cast out uh, that Call that that old serpent, the one that um, def uh, uh, that deceived Eve, called the devil and Satan, which uh, deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out of the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, so that also goes into defining exactly who the dragon is, and confirming what his whole purpose or what he's what he's been doing all along. Um, and then 13 and when the dragon saw that he was cast out unto the earth he persecuted persecuted the woman which was brought forth uh, which persecuted the, the woman which brought forth the man child so this woman now which is uh, which was brought into the land this woman here which was protected um, by God supernaturally in in this um, in the land is now being persecuted by the dragon who is cast out of heaven and at this point the woman is given two wings of an eagle and she um, she flies into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time um, from the face of the serpent that's the, from the face of the dragon so this is where she's taken into a place of safety in the wilderness and she remains in that wilderness through until the end of the 14th year of tribulations coming back just for that uh, for the uh, to be restored um, during the time of at the at the jubilee in the 15th year so that's the woman in, uh, taken care of with revelations uh, 12 17 goes on to tell us that the dragon was wrath with the woman and went and this is now after she's taken to the place of safety uh, he he went to make war with the remnant of a seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ so this is the war now between the 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 dragon and the remnant um uh, of of the woman's seed uh, this is i understand this to be the army of god the the Probably the 144,000. This uh, uh, both groups. Okay, there's there's a there's 144,000 that were sealed mm, do, uh, at the end. Yeah, uh, this I don't think I don't think actually I didn't uh, bring it in. But the 144,000 which were sealed in this time period, they were working together with the witnesses 
through the time of the first half of seals and now they make war uh, and now there's war between the dragon on earth it's no longer in heaven now the first the war was in heaven the second war is on earth and at this point in time we also learn that um, the beast that was thrown into the pit comes to the fore that's where Revelation 17 uh, 11 tells us that and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition okay that's the dragon gang uh, I just want to see yeah it's over here um, yeah. okay so in Revelation 11 you see how we're going from 12 to 11 now uh, in the order of things and yeah Revelation 11 7 and when they and, and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that that's the it, that's the the two witnesses of course okay the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless but shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them so this is the beast that was that was killed earlier on at the sixth seal now coming out from the bottomless pit making war against the the two witnesses and probably the the, the rest of the remnant uh, together with the dragon and that continues for two and a half years till the end of the 13th year uh, at which the two witnesses are killed and probably many of the 144,000 I'm not sure exactly probably only 7,000 left or so and, um, and that's uh, that's what we, we, we're seeing here uh, if we read in Revelation 11 5 and the seventh uh, angel sounded and there was uh, and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever so that's the seventh trumpet now sounded um and then we're going on to uh, so that's we're going to see now in revelation 10 that and i saw another mighty angel come down that's uh, i believe here Jesus and he was clothed with the cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face uh, was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire that's clearly Jesus and he had in his hand a little book and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth and he cried with a loud voice uh, as when a lion roars and when he had cried the seven thunders uttered their voices so that's the seven thunders that's Jesus coming down and putting an end. Uh, this is immediately after they were resurrected, okay, uh, from the dead, the two witnesses. So, and that's Revelations 10. So, if you can see again, we've gone. I'm just, uh, I mean, it's just a no-brainer. I mean, that's it's, it's 13, 12, 11, 10. Um, the, the the events are in order. Uh, it's, there's just no no debate about it. Okay, and then of course the bookmark we've already, um, the bookend we, we've spoken about, uh, where it book, bookends the mark of the beast and and those that overcome. I've moved this year. I, I, I think it's here, although I tend, my initial thought was that the, they'd gotten the victory, but it does seem that um, these 144,000 that also didn't take the mark there uh, in during time of seals and, and carry on through, uh, to the end are, are the victors um, and I, at this point talking about the 144,000 I believe it's actually more than 144,000 it is my, my belief that it, this is two groups of 144,000 uh, the, first, the first group of 144,000 being virgins uh, from all nations uh, and working during the time of seals uh, joined again together later on in revelation 7 by another 144,000 uh, giving us a total of 288,000 which is exactly the number of the size of david's um, uh, temple army if you want to call it that uh, which were which were on duty um, within the temple so there are, there are some parallels there are some the I didn't go into it in 
too much detail when I started off with the structure, but I, I believe that the reason why the 144,000 are standing here before the lamb um, is because this is this 144,000 comes on the scene right at the very beginning. Okay, that's what Revelation 14 is. It's not the same as the 144,000 that are sealed. These are all Israelites. These, this is a mix. My personal understanding is that it's mixed of 24,000 uh, Israelites and 120,000 uh, Gentiles. The reason why I say that is because we've got Dan and Ephraim that are not mentioned in this 144,000, uh, but they would have been in the the first two groups, uh, the first part of the, well, in the first 140,000 being 12,000 and 12,000, that's 24,000, and the remaining 120,000 from Gentiles, we get that there's, two, there's the story of the the woman, uh, the uh, Queen Sheba, that when she visits uh, Solomon, a type of Jesus, and um, she 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 gives him a gift of 120,000 talents. Um, there's a link there to the 120,000 Gentiles, and also when you and in in Nineveh, uh, when uh, 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 they were given a warning by Jonah and. Uh, the, later on in that in that story, you can go read it. Um, is that a hundred and twenty thousand souls uh, were were saved, uh, and much cattle. So, and then Jesus in Luke tells us that he will be uh, a sign as Jonah was a sign unto this generation, uh, linking that. And he goes on to mention the um, the woman, the queen of the south, that shall rise in the judgment. Uh, with the men of Nineveh that will condemn the the people at that time um, because one even greater than Jonah is before them and they don't believe it so they are in they are subjected to they will be subjected to greater condemnation as a result so there's a clear links in 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 the, in the book of Luke Jesus brings in the the story of Nineveh and the story of the Queen of the South and both of them have a story uh, of the 120,000, uh, which I believe is related to to the, a, a group of 120,000 Gentiles, uh, which is 12,000 times 10. Um, it just kind of, to me, it just gels. And and I cannot unsee these two groups of 144,000. I cannot unsee the structure of Revelations. Uh, um, I could be wrong, but I just when I look at it, the more I go through it the more I'm convinced that that is the case. Uh, the structure is telling us that there are two groups and there's one in the beginning and another one seven years later and then they press on. So in this in the storyboard we've got 177,000 I believe that comes through from Revelation 14 through the time of seals. Some of them, probably not all of them, there, there will be um, some deaths probably involved in that um, during that time, many deaths. But some of them may well join in with the other new group of 144,000 for the time of trumpets, which will be really bad. And I, I think uh, because we're told that right at the end here, I think it was in Revelations 10, where... Uh, it's actually in the structure where 7,000 are slain. Um, yeah, 7,000 are slain. Revelation 11, where the 7,000 are slain, might well be the final number of the um, of the two of the two groups of 144,000. Okay, so I think. Um, that brings us to the end of I think I covered all the the, 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 the verses in Revelation that relate to to the beasts. Um, yeah, I think there's there's nothing. Um, this is the one I didn't cover and uh, seventeen ten and and there was okay and uh, and there were seven kings, five are fallen, one is and another is not yet come and and when he come he must you must continue a short space. Yeah. Sure. This this uh, seventeen ten is is clearly related, and Alan did a great video on on this um, on these uh, on this uh, seventeen ten together with the the beasts of of Daniel uh, Daniel eight 
where we've clearly got these horns are heads so if you count the horns you've got two three uh, plus plus four that's seven heads uh, and in, then we're told that you know um, of the se of the of the seven the eighth is of the seven so we've got that it it, it it ties into the story Alan explains it very well in that video I will put a link in the description box uh, to that uh, to that video and in Revelation 17 10 which seems to be probably over here where it says that uh, that five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short space and the short space I think is the is this um, the second half of seals uh, I think that's where Revelation 17 10 should be it, it, it could be earlier it could be right down here uh, it could be that uh, because we also told that the one the the uh, the eighth horn here is the one that puts an end to the daily which is at the beginning of the 2300 days and um, so maybe the, the switch over it's possible that the switch over from the 6th to the 7th which must continue a short space could actually happen here uh, which is an, 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 um, the 7th that must yeah so anyway there's still a little bit of thought to go into into some of that uh, to ah yes I, I forgot to mention here yeah this this one here revelation 17 uh, 3 and it relates to the detail of the of the the um the harlot that rides the the beast now this is very interesting when you read this um it, it reads revelation 17 3 that says that um so you, uh, you carry so you carried me away in the spirit and in into the wilderness and I saw a woman uh, sit upon a scarlet colored beast, so it's a red beast, full of blasphemy, uh, so, sorry, full of names of blasphemy, and having seven heads and ten horns. So clearly it's the same beast here. It's the, the red, it's, it's, it's red horse, it's a, it's a red beast. Okay, for the first time we're actually told what the color of the beast is. Okay, but the rest of it is, clear, is, is, the, is exactly the same. Uh, names of blasphemy. On, and then the heads, the seven heads and the ten horns. Um, so that's why we know this beast, and, and the reason why it's red, I believe, is because he's given power from the dragon, which we told over here. Um, so there's the blasphemy, names of blasphemy, the ten crowns and the seven heads. Okay, and he was given power f uh, from uh, by the by the. Um, the beast and he's and he was given his seat and i covered some of that his seat um uh, stuff in the previous video i'm not going to go into that now but let's just get into this now it's interesting that when the woman is seen riding on this beast the beast has still got 10 horns <clears throat> yeah by mid trumpet uh, mid seals he doesn't have 10 horns anymore he's now got eight horns because three were plucked out and one little one came in its place so it's not ten horns anymore. So it's not this beast that she's riding on. She's riding on this beast from the beginning. So somewhere during the first part of seals is when the woman is riding on the beast. And that's just something. And the other thing we're told somewhere along the line, I don't think I've got, I've got that verse here. Anyway, we're, uh, uh, we're told that the, the the horns hate the the this this uh, woman, and they eventually um, kill her with fire and and. <clears throat> so, um, so I've, got, I've just mentioned that, and yeah, so she's writing it, and they hate her. So, I, I suggested in my last video that these ten horns are the, uh, the 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 ten tribes that are listed in in Psalm eighty three, which are the tribes that are all around uh, that surround Israel. Let me just go. I think I've got it here. Yeah, these tribes. I said that Psalm 83, these, these ten tribes that surround Israel, I believe, are the kings of these ten horns. Um, three of them will be plucked up 
and a new one another one will come in a, in its place to make eight so i don't know which one of the, these three which ones of these three will be plucked up that'll be that'll remain to be seen but it does include assyria and and the ishmaelites which is uh, at least a part of saudi arabia if not the whole of saudi arabia including the 10 not in the big beast uh, which is contrary to our understanding up until now uh, maybe the Saudi Arabia doesn't play as great a role as what we thought it did, uh, thought Saudi Arabia did. Anyway, so that's the, um, you know, that's so. So they, they, those, if they are in fact the ten horns, um, and they still got crowns, they come in with crowns and they give their crowns over to the beast. They, they, they hand their power over. Um, and that's where the crown that's why I've depicted the crowns having moved from the horns um, to the beast itself and it's at this time when there's still ten of them uh, that the woman is, is seen riding this beast um, this little guy yeah <laughs> he's that two old uh, beast there's not a lot of set to him that's the revelation 13 I didn't actually point it out but that comes on the scene probably somewhere around here while the the, the harlot is riding the beast Anyway, this harlot is Mystery Babylon the Great, and the mother of harlots and the abominations, uh, uh, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, so I I'm I don't know who this woman is. I'm going to make a stab at it. I was having a chat to my my son Baron um, just last night, and uh, I've had I've had the view that it could be the Catholic Church. I've had the view that it could be the uh, the Islamic. Um, a fraternity the islamic uh, 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 and muslim uh, religion or if you want to call them a church i don't know if you call them a church whatever they are um but i think uh baron uh, well, in in my in the in our discussion you mentioned but that's uh, uh, zion and i do believe it is i believe it's political zion i believe it's not the uh, it's the it's the uh, the 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 the, um, the Pharisees that have come through Pharisees and probably together with the Sadducees I don't know but at least the Pharisees that have come through the ages and changed their form and are, and and these are the political Zionists these are the Zionists that that uh, that actually have been manipulating the scene uh, throughout uh, history they uh, they I believe that they infiltrated the church the Catholic Church and. Uh, uh, and they form the greater part of the Jesuits. The Jesuits are the uh, Pharisees that have that have that have corrupted the church through the Catholic faith, uh, the Catholic Church, uh, and, the, and they've infiltrated uh, into um, Islam. In my view, as well, they've 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 uh, take they behind the scenes. They really control um, Islam and all the various activities that the Islamists and the, and the Muslims get up to. Um, and then, of course, they 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 have a finger in the pie in manipulating the Jews as, as well, the the fanatical Jews, and the whole of Israel. And it was them uh, under the under various guises and comprising probably the greater part of the Illuminati and the Freemasons have also in full been. Uh, so perhaps the Illuminati are in fact the Zionists mystery behind the scenes operating manipulating all these fraternities um, the Freemasons the Catholics the Islam um, uh, and, and etc and that they are actually the the heart of uh, mystery Babylon which really means that we're looking at a um, you know a, a a harlot that is probably a combination of all of those um, the Freemasons the the Catholic Christians the Catholic Church and the and the Islams and the, and the Jews that are pro um, if we have a look at that um, they've built a, a, a temple for all three of those faiths uh, uh, in, in, in Dubai I think it is uh, I, don't, I don't it's been a while since I, I looked at that but I think that that's alluding to the kind of that is the the harlot, the combination of all of them um, that is riding the beast. 
then what is the reason for these ten horns hating her? Um, if I'm, if it's, you know, if it is largely, you know, Catholic Zionists with some influence or partly uh, Islam, um, it kind of um, gives us an idea why these ten might hate. Uh, this this particular harlot. Anyway, that's something that we still got to figure out. Those are just some suggestions. I'm not saying that is the case, but I do believe that by the time by the time that uh, we get to the, the middle part of the seals, the harlot will have will have been killed and and destroyed by the the ten horns. Uh, that's just my understanding. That's why I put this Revelation uh, 17. Uh, seems to fit here okay in terms of timing mm. so that's why I had Revelation 10 a little bit further down uh, but it could also be earlier on I, I, I'm, I'm not going to we'll see as we go along if, as we try and get a bit more clarity on this Okay, I don't want to belabor the point too much. I think I've I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. I hope that this 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 will give you some um, some some something to think about, something to to meditate on, something to pray on, as we try to figure these things out in greater detail. I don't think I'm too far off the mark in terms of my understanding. I think there's a couple of details that still need to be ironed out, some crinkles, etc. But I think overall. I'm fairly convinced that that will be the sequence of events, and uh, that we, uh, those are the that that's the story of the beasts. That we are that we that we are trying to understand. So with that, I bless you, and I'm out.